What's good, everybody? Look, y'all know who I am, but for those who don't know, I go by the name of Gabriel Ori, and this is my business partner, co-host. What's up, people? It's JR. Listen, man, we're back another Friday. I Freedom Friday, man. I feel it in the air, JR, man. How's your Friday going, bro? Man, Friday's going wonderful, man. You know, Friday, I love Fridays, man, because it's like it's like a wind just flow through. It's, it's breeze, you know what I mean? Just, That's a, right. just a simple, simple day. Relaxed day almost. So. Man, it's, it's, it's like the moniker says, uh, thank God it's Friday. Yeah. Um, and you know how we do. This is another Friday, no different. We have a very special guest in the okay. green room uh, with us. We're very excited about this one. Another first. You know, we've been dropping a lot of firsts. But before we bring this person on, I want y'all to share this video. I want y'all to share the video. Hit share and tag, you know, artists, tag business people people mm. that's in the business industry entrepreneurs you know bosses if that's what you want to use the word bosses mm -hmm. uh tag people who are in the community uh activists people who are doing things that's pushing the needle you know how we say this pod is called ask a producer and even though we're into music this is not necessarily only about music it's sure. about producing in life and we want to bring people on who's pushing that needle who's impacting the community who's doing things that's going to impact uh just the nation in a whole but it starts right with your local body your family uh your neighborhood your community and that's the type of people that we bring on and so tonight's guest is no different uh he hails from the mighty the greater north charleston area another local native uh to the pod he's a legend in his own right uh how many of you guys ever went to a choir showcase and you got to listen to the nice uh talent that we have right here uh in charleston and the, the major artists that come and, and 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 grace the stage well we have one of the persons or the person yeah. that puts this thing on every year annually is always happening around Mother's Day. And so we're so glad and elated to have this guest. We have the one, the only Mr. Gerald Footman. Min. <laughs> What's up, family? Oh, What's up, my family? goodness. How hey, hey. Doing? How'd I do, man? How you do? Great introduction, okay? man. And I will pay you later for that, brother. Just send me a cash app. That will cash app you right away. What a great introduction. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it my little thing to try to introduce people, just bring it up on, man. I'm, hey, this oh, you, is, you deserve pay. that. You, you deserve that and more, man. You deserve it and more. So listen, I know I gave you a little small, soft introduction, but why don't you introduce yourself to our platform in your own way? Well, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you both and JR just for giving me the opportunity to come on uh, and speak and, and, and just talk with you all. Y'all are some giants in your industry, and I want you to know that. And they don't, it do not go unnoticed. Um, everything y'all have done, y'all recording, how y'all work with the community. And I just want to take this time to say thank you for having little me to come on y'all major <laughs> network and just talk just about a little bit about what God have allowed my wife and I to accomplish. And you know, my name is everybody know I'm Gerald Footman. I'm I'm a server. I'm I, I born being a server. I will always be a server. Um, God have really been gracious to us though. He have been gracious to me. He have blessed me to become this entrepreneur. Uh, never know, you know, it's like when you do one thing, it leads to another, then it leads to another. So I'm just, you know, I'm very uh, simple, uh, but you know, God has blessed us with several businesses. Um, I started off, and a lot of people don't know this, um, but I'm very humbled. I started off selling clothing out my car. Um, years ago, I don't know if you want me to tell a little bit about myself or just, yeah. well, no, no, I, was, no, no, no. I, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you know, I started off selling clothing uh, back in 1997. And before then, I worked at hotels, uh, uh, some hotel I was major D, um, banquet captain, whatever you want to call it. And I learned the, the, the great gift. I worked for the Marriott. And I was the number one, <laughs> it could go down in records. I was the number one uh, uh, hospitality uh, person. Um, every time mm. Ross Perot came here, when the convention center first opened back in 94, and I handled that whole Ross Perot 
uh, Medal of Honor. He got inducted into the Medal of Honor. And they had me handed the head table and it was 1,500 people there. So uh, I was working for the Marriott for years and, and then I transitioned and started selling clothing. But I started selling the watches out, you know, out my car and that led to something else. I started selling clothing and I used to go around in these beauty salons. And one salon I, I went to one day and I bought some little reasonable clothing. And the young lady looked at me and said, look, uh, 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 look what you got on. Why are you going to sell me this mess? <laughs> <laughs> I don't forget that. Her name is Shay. I never forget that on Ashley Phosphate Road. She said, why are you going to sell me this junk? Sit, bring me some clothing. So you know what happened? I flew to New York. Our cousin, our cousin um, uh, was Nathan, Nathan Green. Yeah. He met yeah. me in New York. And I went round to all of to the garment district and I never looked back. And I got one of a kind outfits and I was dressing, you know, television news anchors, um, pastor wives, going to 100 salons a month, a month. I mean, 100 salons and rolling my, they call me, you remember that movie, Baby Boy? I roll in yeah. the salon, rolling the clothes in and out of the salon. <laughs> it's a relationship, right? A relationship. And, and, and I really took care of 100 salons. So uh, time went on. So I met my wife. Uh, Tia came in. I had a clothing store with another partner, Sherry Brown. And, and so Tia came in the store one day just looking. And, and we met. And when I, That's my wife, Tia. And when she came in, I knew that was going to be my wife. So long story <laughs> short, we opened up a store, me and Sherry, Von Jays, And me and my wife was talking. And remember, I started going to 100 beauty salons years before that. So when I met my wife, she had a shortcut, really nice. And my wife used to work, you know, Channel 5, and, and people used to ask, where do you get your hair? You know, they did a whole segment on Channel 5 on where the teal goes, where the teal get her head done is at, you know, get her head done at. So what happened, our mentor said, you, you must always have a mentor when you're trying to grow. You can't mm. get around it. You got to have somebody who already been there who can yeah. help you along. You will make your own mistakes, but you must have somebody in your in your area to to help you. So the mentor told her, you and your husband should start a magazine. Okay, I went from closing up my car, selling clothes off my car, right? To meet the partner, start start the lady beauty salons. I mean beauty um uh, clothing at the at Bon Jays. Then when I met my wife Tia, the, our mentor said, "Look, Tia, everybody love her hairstyle. You used to go to 100 salons a month. You remember that? Mm. So when we went to start the magazine, which is Hair Etc. Watch this. Now Hair Etc. The first day I went out, we started that company with fifty dollars. I had enough money to open up a bank account." And I think it was Wachovia at the time, or Bank of America, one of those banks. But yeah. I went there, I opened up the account for $50, the LLC for $50. And now the first day I went out to solicit business for uh, hair, et cetera, I signed up 30 beauty salons. Wow. At, five, at $500 per salon. The All right, we listen. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> this part's right there. Let me let me hit the brakes. <laughs> so now listen, you said a whole lot, and, and y'all share this video. This man is <laughs> dropping jewels and gems. Like it's like crumbs of gems all over the street right now. Pick them up, pick up what he's putting down. But I want to go back. You uh -huh. so now obviously you seem like you already you understand business. Right. You wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're talking that entrepreneur talk like just going. Hey, entrepreneurs to me just are people who can connect different things to right. make it happen. They, they answer problems pretty much. But they solve problems rather. Right. Um, so where did you get that from? That, that I want to go behind. Where did you get that spirit, Work that ethic. entrepreneur spirit? Where did you get that from? Well, I believe it runs in the family. Um, uh, my mom was a Johnson, right? My dad is a Johnson, right? <laughs> it's something about this Johnson blood. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, and, but now I was in high school. Uh, I used to be out there 
laying bricks with my uncles, the Johnson, Leon Johnson and Uncle Perry Johnson, JC. So I picked up this entrepreneur spirit while I was in high school. And, wow. and, and I would never let, and I always told, we, you know, when you're on a job laying bricks, right? Are you a, a, a apprentice? All you're doing is mixing modern and setting up the next place for the bricklayers to go when they finish one part. One thing we always to be very competitive and we always try to outdo each other in a good way. So, you know, um, so I learned that at a young age to work. And, and, and so I always said to myself, nobody would never outwork me. Mm. And, and so, and, 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 and if you want to be uh, successful and entrepreneurship is up and down, one day you up here, the next yeah. day something happened, you down here, you got to have that 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 drive to keep moving, yeah. and and so I guess I picked it up from my family blood. My dad worked really hard. He pastored uh, the church for forty six years, and so I always had that spirit to to work hard. And one thing I never meet a stranger. Um, I always would be kind to people because you kind you gonna always you gonna always. Uh, move up when you kind of people and one thing i never look down on people right i will always the only time the bible said you look down on somebody be picking them up so i was able to i guess develop at a young age um that work ethics i guess so that's how i always had that drive to work and and, and try to be some kind of be successful even just by helping people don't make the same mistakes i make i made a lot of mistakes in business um, but God have been so gracious to us. He had helped us. So I guess um, just my upbringing, uh, my family, uh, all, most Johnsons are entrepreneurs and they are very successful. You know, yeah, uh, hey, you, that, you, you, it go all the way back a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when, I, when I met JR and I found out about the Johnson legacy, I was like, man it's like what do you guys do, what what is it that y'all don't do right and every every sector to me is like it's covered like from music <laughs> to building houses and i'm like okay right. man I, that yeah. that is that is a great trait um to have question for you uh, uh, because you said you made a lot of mistakes uh -huh. as, as well and and we all going to make the mistakes when you, do, yeah. when, when you do run into those challenges or you you feel like you made a mistake what do you do to bounce back and how how do you approach like these mistakes that you make so that it, that you won't make them again keep showing up keep showing up you know what i mean by that if you make a mistake and you know i'm in the, in the public i'm in working with salons working with clients so you make mistakes with clients and some people when they make mistakes they run running high you know they they try to duck and and, 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 and no, I face those mistakes head on. I face the people mm. because my thing is you're going to make mistakes in business. It's how you respond to the mistakes you make. You make, you know, so yeah. you, you must be open minded. You you must also, uh, I, I think it was, who was that say they failed? Michael, Michael Jordan said they failed. He missed so many dunks. He missed so many free throws. He failed so many times. He got cut on the basketball team. And he got he cut. Yeah. Showing up, right? Mm -hmm. So even when you make mistakes, acknowledge that. And I call yes. it challenge it. Acknowledge your mistakes, right? If you make a mistake, of, if you don't, if you don't, uh, and you say you're gonna do something, and for some reason it couldn't happen, call that person and apologize and keep moving. Are uh, you make a mistake with? finance or or you should your your outfit ain't come in time make you know it's amazing um i know and, and let me show you how let me just share how when i'm working through the marriott right i worked there and one lady was very unhappy she was very unhappy and the marriott taught us to always always empower yourself to make it right mm. all employed that was out we will empower ourselves to make everything right. So this lady came downstairs really upset. I mean, just, I'm not never staying at a Marriott in my life. And she was a major client. If she wasn't a major client, she still would've got the same treatment. So I told her, I said, well, what could make you happy? I will give you, um, I tell you what, you can come eat without eat on the restaurant the rest of the week on the Marriott. You don't have to pay for your food the rest of the week. She still wasn't happy. 
I said, well, um, we can give you one night free. She so wasn't, wasn't happy. I said, I tell you what, your next three stays here gonna be on the Marriott. She like, oh, y'all are so kind. Thank you. I appreciate it. All you're doing is solving a problem and it's not that bad because you may never see this person again, right? So we make mistakes such a big deal. Just apologize. Just come clean. You know, just just talk. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason why people who are in business make mistakes and don't want to apologize because their pride get in the way. Oh, yeah. And if you're going to be a successful businessman, you can't be prideful. Mm-mm. That's what that's, that's biblical. You, you got to be be humble. Yeah. I'm a child taste of grace. So in a nutshell, that's how I'm able to keep moving even when I make mistakes. I just the one lady told me I can't even get mad at you if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to hear. Uh, I like to listen to Myron Golden during the morning time, uh-huh. and I heard one of his uh, messages because he's he's a guy. He's a millionaire. He talks about you know making money and uh, how to grow your business, and he's also yeah. a man of God as well. Um, and he also said it's something as far as that was very uh, key point. Success is failure upside down. You got to fail to to right. to succeed because you got to. That's how you learn. You don't right. learn without failing. So right. in business, you got to fail. You have to even just look for yourself failing. But like you said, if you if you've done something that may have hurt someone, right? Apologize. Move forward. Don't 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 don't. You can't grow without. Uh, being polite or whatever, um, right. you, you got you got to go through that type of phase to to, to be better at mm-hmm. where you are. Yeah, definitely. And so, speaking of of success and failing, and mm-hmm. failing is a part of the success equation. Um, we want y'all to to share this video. This is a good time to take a break. But when yeah. we come back, we I. I personally just found out that this man is a pastor of a church. <laughs> so we we, we want to know about that and how you kind of navigate all of these different waters uh, that you have going on. All when we come back, ask the producer, share this video. p.m. at the North Charleston Performing Arts Center. Miranda Curtis is all in at the Community Faithworks 17th Annual Choir Showcase. Plus the phenomenal Kim Burrell taps into it. Along with nine of the Southeast's most popular choirs, ensembles, and music collaboratives. Get your tickets today for the Southeast's longest-running choir celebration at all Ticketmaster locations, the North Charleston Performing Arts Center, or log on to ChoirShowcase.com for tickets, details, and vendor opportunities. Come make it a musical Mother's Day celebration at the 2024 Choir Showcase. Brought to you by the Joy Law Firm, the City of North Charleston, Palmetto Project, Self-Help Credit Union, the Charleston Parks and Recreation Commission, Fox Music House, GAA, Footprint Transit, South Carolina Federal Credit Union, and all powered by Community FaithWorks. And we're back. So listen. If y'all have been sitting under a rock or something like that, we're rocking right here with our guy, Mr. Gerald Footman. And and listen, man, this man dropped so many gems. I did not know that he was into fashion like that. I didn't know he was a, in the hotel, the hospitality business and everything. And before the break, um, I mentioned that he is also a pastor. This is something that, man, how do you do it? Now, you you... We know we're going to get to the showcase, but like, how do you do all of these different things? Talk about becoming a pastor. How long have you been pastoring? Where are you pastoring at? And how's that been for you? Okay. Well, (laughs) once again, just like entrepreneurship runs in the family, pastoring (laughs) runs in the family. I have several uncles and cousins are, you know, are amazing leaders and pastors. So, you know, I I have been pastor now for a total of five years. Uh, I guess Whoa. the year of grace. 
Um, my father pastored uh, the church in Most Corner, a Cooper store called Trinity Holiness Church of God in Christ. My father passed for 46 years and he went home. He got sick probably 10 years into uh, before he went home to be with the Lord. And, and maybe uh, six months to three months, um, I was able to speak one, three months, I was able to speak on a, on a Christmas service, Christmas right. day, it was on a Sunday. And my father said afterwards, he was in a wheelchair at this, that time, had Parkinson's. And so I said, son, I heard you today, you are ready. I said, not me, dad. <laughs> Maybe my sister Londa, because she is a preacher, you know, she been pastor. I mean, she was preaching for years. And he said, no, it's you, son. I need you to pastor. And maybe he came to church on the 25th of December. He was gone on the 15th of January. And he wow. came back to church again. And wow. and so I accept the call. And 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 my wife was like, Lord, I wish I'd known. <laughs> <laughs> she would have stopped that. <laughs> oh, man. And so I accept the call the pastor and 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 so I, not knowing I have been under my father for all these years, it's mm. amazing how much I learned. Mm. And an interesting thing, my brothers, I never spoke in church. Like I, I played the music, I tried to play the music, not like JR, but just try to play the music. But I never I never spoke in church. I was always quiet. Just on the organ. Did my church never heard me speak? Never heard mm. me wow. talk. Just always quiet. Not knowing everything my dad was saying was I was uh you know Lunge, this absorbing it. Yeah, yeah. Absorbing and all of that. And so pastor have been okay, you know. Um I have had uh, had great once again mentors. I have have great mentors, um, you know, by me being in the outside. You know, doing businesses and whatnot, it helped me. Re but believe it or not, with the church and my thing, I didn't come in like a normal. Home. I came in, and I came in to delegate and to grow the church. Because when you got us, when you move to an established church for so long, you got to go in there a certain way. So I had mentors to lead me and guide me to make sure that I don't, you know, just to understand ministry. And people say they understand it. Until you become a pastor, <laughs> then you really understand the ups and downs. I read something with Jake said, tw 20 things, 21 things. I saw that today. It, it was powerful, right? And, and so I have experienced some of that. But um, but pastoring is, is five years and, and I'm getting there. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still, um, uh, I think I'm still uh, preaching. It take time to find your your your, your medium. It take time to find your your way. You know your what you comfortable with. Because my style might not be like the next person's style, but be yourself. And as long as you preaching the word of God and you helping the people, you doing God's word. Okay. So, um, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, man, it's it's important. This and I I, I wanted to pause you there because I don't want to scave through this. Right. Me, me personally, I'm a, I'm a pastor's kid. Everybody on here is a pastor's kid. And like you, I've been raised and just absorbing everything in church. The one thing that I've learned and you, you hit it, but I want to, I want to really hit it is you got to be yourself. See, I think the generation now, when you hear pastor, you think preach and you think style and everybody gets engulfed into a certain style. And it's almost like if you don't have this style, then uh, this you ain't a real a preacher or a pastor or, or whatever you want to call it. I don't think that's the way at all. I think God calls different types of people Correct. like you. You strike me as the type that you are a businessman. You understand how to put networks and things together and make it work. Mm -hmm. That's your style. Right, and you should right. you should approach uh, pastoring in that way right you don't have to hoop and holler if that's not your thing right and it's, it's okay so I, I i just wanted to add that man like everybody has a different personality not all churches right. are the same way and i think that's by design well you know that's a good point you said uh Gabriel. that's a good point because you must lead from your lead gift there you go okay mm. wherever your lead gift is uh you know some people 
might not know they need a gift. <laughs> Some people yeah. maybe don't know they have a gift, you know? Yeah. So, but everybody have gifts. God have blessed us tremendously. The gift come without repentance, you yeah. know? Um, but it, everybody have, so my lead gift, I lead from that. Mm. And then I fill in the rest with gifted folks around me. And, and that's how the church continue to grow. My, my lead gift might not be administrator. The next pastor mm -hmm. lead gift might be administrator. My lead gift may be marketing. You know, my lead gift may be saying it. Whatever your lead gift is, lead with that. Joe yeah. Osteen, if he never taught you anything, he was yeah. the camera production man for his father. He he followed his father around, father around every place he went. If you see his broadcast, you can tell he invested in his lead gift, which is his camera, his production, how it mm. looked, the colors, because that was his lead gift. Perfect. So he's able to, to now his lead gift, he, he's able to build people around him. Some people mm. may be great singers. Well, let that be your gift. You still preach the word. So everybody have a different way to connect with people. So if you leave from your lead gift, and let everybody other gift alone, you will sleep better at night as a pastor and you will be so a lot of pastors can be very 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 um what's the word i'm looking for very competitive okay yeah. uh, all right <laughs> it could be low self-esteem I, I have because you got to realize i dealt with pastors before i became a pastor mm. by doing the quiet showcase and we get to that in, in just a minute but i have dealt with hundreds of pastors they have called me to help with their production they have called me to do different things for them one pastor used to purchase a hundred tickets from me every month i mean every year to, to come to the quiet showcase so i saw how these pastors would size different pastors up oh would size different people up oh, they got his little church needs new cop like i saw that well <laughs> i heard it i saw wow. it like but you're a pastor, you know? So some pastors have low self-esteem and, and they got to always be loud to be heard. But when you're mm. your lead gift, you can be silent and just as strong. Man, well, you know? so, you, listen, you said that perfectly, yeah. perfectly. And, and, and I mean, it's, it's such a blessing to hear uh, you say that, you know, and you, you mentioned lead gifts. So speaking of gifts, uh -huh. you have the FB, the <laughs> Footman Bureau Enterprise. Such a gift, such a gift. So, so tell me, I, I, how did that come about? And I remember, I'm just going to share a little story. I had to come to your your guys' office mm -hmm. right there in what's that, Goose Creek? Right, Rivers Avenue. Uh -huh. Rivers yeah, Avenue. this is 2016 to get tickets and things like that because I was going to be on the showcase, mm -hmm. and I'm just looking around like, all right, and this is my first time. I knew of you through JR, but this is like kind of my first time like dealing, like meeting you face to face, you know, and I'm like, man, who, who is this guy? You know, um, how did you, you and your wife, Tia, come up with this Footman Bureau Enterprise and, and then the, the choir showcase, how did that come about? Okay, let me, let me digress right quick. Let me, let me just leave this last part with the pastors. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I think most pastors, well, not most pastors, some pastors. See, I have another outlet, okay? I have I have the Quiet Showcase, Footman Brewer Enterprises. So I, some pastors who just pastors only, which is cool, they don't have no other outlet. Uh, so yeah. They got to be the top dog. <laughs> and then, and then, let me leave that alone. It just, yeah, you yeah, have to yeah. come back again. Good point. Good point. I, I, I'm telling you, man, you don't have to be so on top. You don't have to be so extra when you're a pastor. Just See, this, this makes me ask more questions about that. But I, I didn't hear you. Uh, so I'm sorry. It's, it makes me want to ask more questions about this, but we can't stay here. We can't. Well, let's go. Okay. So quiet showcase. <laughs> quiet showcase. Okay, Footman Brewer came from Footman Brewer, which is my name is Footman. My wife's name is Brewer. She worked really hard for her name. It was Tia Brewer when she was connected with Live by News. So it's Tia, hyphen, Tia Brewer hyphen Footman. But we came up with that um, enterprises, because we enterprise in. So 
uh, we came up with that. Uh, and Flippin' Brewer Enterprises is a uh, um, Hair Cetera magazine, excuse me, Grace magazine mm. events. So we are a publishing event consulting firm. Okay. Wow. So we could publish, for, we that help people publish their magazine. And I save people a lot of money because they don't have to go through what I went through to find the right printer. No, I would tell you, I got a structure. This is how you do a magazine. This is how you build a magazine. This this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this is the printer you go to and you're done. We had to look for but really all, all kind of stuff. So Flipman Brew Enterprises, we 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 produce magazines, we we um do events, um, and uh, we also consult for different multicultural uh, markets who want to uh, sponsors who want to reach the underserved markets. So the Quiet Shows case came about maybe I want to say maybe five years into our business. Okay, mm. we used to do something called Hair Etc. Expo. Um, Hair Etc. Expo. We used to do the same hundred salons that I started with selling clothing. See, when you put seed in the ground, it's coming back. But that's a whole nother story. Oh, heck yeah, that pastor oh, boy's coming again. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Some salon never paid me. It was fine. It's fine. But guess what? When I started the magazine, so we had a, a Beauty and Healthy Living Expo. Okay? We started that. We had L'Oreal USA. We had Soft Team Carson's. We had the largest epic um, beauty brand in the world. Wow. Part of our uh, magazine that we did the expo. So one day we was we started Grace Magazine as well. So Grace Magazine, we used to do something with Keith Mayor Summit. He asked us to be part of his North Charleston Culture Art Festival. Said y'all come in, we give you some incentives. So we did that, right? At the at the Performing Arts Center. So 17 years later, we're still doing it. So I told my wife, I said, you know what? I would love to do something for the choirs. Uh, my mom might have told me something about choirs. Say, so, you know what? That's not a bad idea. So I called McDonald's, who was my sponsors for I'm here at Center Magazine. So Carolyn Hunter, she's one of the owners. So they gave me the marketing person information, right? Well, the marketing person told me, I'm gonna tell you exactly what he told me. He told me, he said, you know what? I'm a Christian, and I want to help you. He said, he said, wow. put it. Put an initiative together. Put listen. Put an initiative together. Yeah. Put an activation together that I could take back to my agency. Then we see what we could do. Me and my wife went back to the drawing board. We said, "How about quiet showcase?" Because McDonald's just started a new website, right, for Charleston. Mm -hmm. Now, when websites was pretty big in the early 200s, so. Um, they just started a website and I'm trying to speed up. They started a website and what they did with that website, they was trying to get people to log on to the website. And for some reason, every company they try, like they try different events, they make it a hundred people to tap it. They try all kinds of stuff. So I said, Jerry, let me tell you, what, I tell you what, that's, that's do a choir competition online. Right, so it can't mm. be competition because that's a, 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 a monopoly. So we have to get all McDonald's corporate in. So, so what, I say, I'll tell, I say, what? How about we do a, a competition online, but we don't charge them? So yeah, we could do it that way. So what we did, we had quiet registered right for forty five days, and then they submit their music online. So when they submit mm. their music online, then what they had to do, they had to select the best of the best for thirty days. Like after the choirs get online, you get to go to, at that time was McDonald's uh, website, right? You go to McDonald's website and you book for your favorite choir, right? Choirs. The first day we had over a thousand votes online. Wow. Wow. It, nobody, they can do it with nobody else. So when we came up with this initiative, that showed McDonald's that the faith faith um, community is very loyal. Yeah. And they told me, well, Gerald, this may last 10 years, five years, because McDonald's get tired real fast with the same thing. It lasts for 12 years. And the only reason why, wow. the only reason why we didn't continue it because their structure internally shifted. And so we yeah. was like, 
the uh, uh, 14 markets in McDonald's, right? In Atlantic Coast, there's 14 markets. So we was in the low country and they had 20, 35 McDonald's in this market. So when they shift the, the structure, the whole South Carolina, a little bit of Charlotte are in the same market now. So that's like over a couple hundred agencies are owners. So it could get real challenging. So that's the only reason why we didn't continue the McDonald in McDonald's name. Okay. So, but they loved it for five years in a row. I'm not saying because of us, but this McDonald's agency, uh, area was number one in the region out of 14 different markets in Atlantic coast. This wow. McDonald's was this agency was well, this region was number one for five years. Wow. So speak, speak very, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, cut you off. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, very creative, very creative. Whoever thought uh, McDonald was sponsored this long and, and get all the media involved. And when you create things, just keep thinking, don't, don't give up. Just keep thinking. And, and mm -hmm. I'm telling you when you got that determination and, and many a times I felt like throwing in the towel, like, man, I don't know we can make it another year. Bam. <laughs> At the ninth hour, I got a call from a, a sponsor. One thing happened during the quiet showcase and we gonna go, cause I don't know. Oh, yeah, I got another appointment and I know y'all got to go too. But one thing happened with the McDonald's Quiet Showcase that took us to the next level. One year we had Marvin Sapp. Mm, and, right. And Marvin Sapp, that was our second year. And this year we was going on tour. South Carolina, North, uh, Georgia, uh, Alabama, right? That was the tour. Well, yeah. what happened was uh, somehow Marvin Sapp missed his flight. And when he missed his flight, I, I remember that. First yeah sold out audience the first one wow to the enemy so but i'm gonna tell you how it worked and, and so what i did i said oh lord he missed his flight god and we sold out so if he didn't show up in charleston it would have messed up making columbus all those other markets that we was traveling to so what happened was i call a pastor because when i asked i said how can you get here he said well the only way i could get here in time get there in time it will cost me Fourteen thousand five hundred for a private jet. Ooh, ooh. I said, "This is my first sold out audience." Now, come on, fourteen thousand. What happened was, I asked one pastor. I said, "What would you do, pastor?" He said, "Man, let me sing his song on stage." <laughs> I said, "No, pastor, that's not the answer." <laughs> said, Man, leave him where he's at. Let me sing this song. And what happened? Marvin he apologized. The wife was sick. She was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. So yeah. a lot was going on. So for him to say yes was a plus. So it wasn't enough that he did. It just happened. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't enough that he did. We, me and him stole like this. It just happened. But things happen sometime in business, right? So what happened? I called another pastor. I said, Pastor, it don't cost me this amount of money. What do I do? This is my first sold out audience. He said, open the palm of your hand. I opened up the palm of my hand. He said, look. The God you serve got the whole world in the palm of his hand. What is 15,000? Man, I got that money so fast. <laughs> see, when I go back to, see, back again, I'm going back to mentors. You got to have somebody who have been where you're trying to go. Because right, right, some right. people is turtles, not because they want to be, but they got a ground level view. You need somebody yeah, yeah. who like got a, Got a giraffe view that yeah, that, that sees beyond, yeah, also yeah. pass, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I I got that money right. Wired them and they and Mama Zap got here a little late, but he got here because my yep. and, and so what happened? My sponsors heard what happened. They said mm. we heard you had to spend some money that you made at the door. Guess what they told me? They said, look, we're gonna raise your money back. And give you your money back because Ooh. if you will sacrifice fourteen thousand just to make sure the sponsors are happy, the crowd are happy, and you and your wife go without, you would do anything to make sure your show works. Wow. And what happened was they gave they I, I retrieved all of my fourteen five back. The seed was planted. <laughs> but God told me 
And I'm going to be honest with y'all. When you sell out the Performing Arts Center, I was the first one ever sold that place out for a gospel event. Wow. He said, your hand might have got a little swollen. So let me make sure you're doing it for, with the right motives, <laughs> right? That's why when you look at Babylon, uh, uh, they had the right, the right, uh, they had the right idea, but the wrong motives. Yeah, yeah. right, right. It was all on the same one accord. It was all on one accord, but they had the wrong motives to meet, yeah. to try to uh, make a name for this. Have to go, you know, for Babylon mm. to fill a tower of heaven. Y'all know yeah. your Bible. So, so. We got to be careful. And so that thing taught me, I don't care how successful I may look, I may be, I'm always at the feet of Jesus. Mm. And when you're at the feet of Jesus, even when it looked like it's growing, oh, that's the more, that's the main time, or that's the most time you need to be on your knees seeking guidance and counsel. Okay, what's my next move? Because when you at your, your top, then mm. we need to be planning next. Now mm. we can get down to your, that's why Blockbuster is no longer existed. Because yeah. It was at the top, but it wasn't planning next. So you learn all this through trial and error. You know, mm. So mm. the Quiet Showcase have been around for 17 years, but that's how I got started by an idea. Wow. You know, and, and we talk about the seven mountains of influence, right? And that's why as believers, if y'all working in the, in, the, in the production industry now, when you do stuff in excellence, God will open up more doors for you, That's right? right? You're doing That's it from a biblical perspective and a leader perspective, not a carnal mind, right? So, so what I had to do, everything I do, I make sure I do with the best of my ability. If I don't know, I get help. So when I called Jerry to help the, the agency of McDonald's, he was already ready because he was a believer. So that's why we got to have believer in the government. We got to have believers in education. We got to have believers in market, marketing entertainment. We got to have believers in music. We got to have believers in family. We got to have believers in, 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 in uh, religion because when you are leading from a biblical perspective, you're going to always make it regardless of what's wow. going on. So yeah. I, I'm just, that's how the Quiet Showcase got started. Listen, man. Oh, go ahead, Jr. Oh, sorry, cut you off. So, so this year, so who who is it that we're going to be having this year for the showcase? And how how many how many choirs we're going to have this year? Is it still going to be the same? We got eight to nine choirs. Okay. We got praise and worship team, right? Oh, nice. Praise and worship teams as well. Mike, this year is all about the community. It's all about helping choirs get back after COVID. I speak, I speak, I spoke with plenty of pastors and they are concerned about the choirs coming back. Mm -hmm. They are concerned about that, that gospel music. Gospel music is, came from, gospel music is like, it started, everything started with gospel music. And so mm -hmm. they are concerned about the choirs coming back. So my job is, as we continue the choir showcase, to make sure that I'm, I'm giving the choirs, the praise and worship leaders, everything that they need. So this year is almost like, this is a year that we are going to a whole another dimension, not another level. But I'm mm -hmm. talking about with sound, production, um, um, vocals, uh, everything from, from the back of the house to the front of the house. We have over nine choirs will be performing from Columbia, South Carolina, from Vance, South Carolina, from Greenville, from all over the state will be performing in this year quiet showcase. And, and so my lovely wife will be uh Coming a special guest. The grocery. We, oh, 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 hey. Hey. My, my wife is more important. My wife just watched <laughs> it. We are live. My wife just came in. <laughs> What's up, dude? Hey, hey, you know what that means? She said, hey, wrap wrap this up. <laughs> hey. Hey. It's amazing how um, uh, it's amazing how my wife just come in and do what she does. But she is the guest this year. She, I mean, the guest. She's the host for the mm, Quiet yeah. Case this year. And we have um, Miranda Curtis. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, nice, nice. And Kim Burrell. Well, Kim Burrell. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we are in for a worship experience like no other. Man. 
I'm serious. Mm -hmm. We are in for something uh, great this year. I'm very excited. 17 years, and 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 I want to just, I mean, thank the, the producers, ask the producers for y'all with everything y'all doing it, and I'm looking forward to y'all setting up at the Quiet Showcase, going live, you know, <laughs> and in, interviewing the audience. So I just think it's going to be a great year. Um, so thank y'all for this time. I'm very humble. How, how can people get tickets uh, this year? Can they go online or is sure. that set up yet? They can go to quietshowcase.com, quietshowcase.com and, and purchase tickets. Our uh, Ticketmasters, you go to Ticketmasters and purchase tickets at ticketmasters.com or the, the North Charleston box office. Uh, ticket, um, go there, they open on, now they open Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to four. And, and they have tickets there or you could call my office at 843-573-7975. And the date for the showcase this year is May 12th. Is that correct? Sunday, May 12th. Sunday, May. May 12th. Yes, sir. Mother's Day. Mother's Day weekend. We are ready to get it. We are excited. That's right. Well, listen, man, we, we are definitely uh, thankful, grateful that you came on our platform uh, to speak about your journey. I know your journey's still going on. It's still a lot to do. Um, but listen, how can people reach you if they wanted to follow you on social platforms or or anything? Yeah, you can, yeah, you can follow me at, at Gerald Flipman on, uh, actually, Ger at Gerald Flipman on Facebook, on Instagram, Gerald underscore Flipman on Instagram, on Twitter, at Gerald Flipman as well. Come nice. on, follow me. Yeah, that's all of my. I think that's all my outlet. I'm on TikTok too, but I think that's whatever. <laughs> I can't remember. You know, I had a, I had a birthday earlier this week, so I'm getting a little old. Happy birthday, yeah. man! Thank you. Yeah, happy Thank you. Thank you. So listen, man. Again, we're, we're we're glad that you came on the platform. You know, this man dropped a lot of jewels, a lot of gems. You know, so if y'all even y'all catch it on the replay, um, share this video. Jr., you got anything else? Yeah, I do. I'm gonna speak it into existence. Mm -hmm. Starting next year. Time to Sound is going to be the house for any art, any choir that's the best choir or whatever. We get to host them in our studio. We're going to sponsor them to record them to to, to put out a single. So, but anyway. We can do that this year. <laughs> well, there it <laughs> is. Yeah. Just one song. One song. One song. One song. Yeah, one song. A single, yeah. Timeless. But now, nah, man. But man, I want to thank you, man, for just blessing us with your presence. As always, man, it's always good talking to you and always listening to the wisdom and, and knowledge that you have and the stuff that you're doing in the business world and, you know, in, in the gospel world as well. So I just want to say thank you, man, for just, you know, coming on and blessing our show. So thank you. Man, it's, it's, go ahead. It's my pleasure, man. I'm, I'm very humble, like I said earlier. I'm very humble to be in business, to be pastoring, to be loving on people. I just, me and my wife, we just, that's what we do. And it's nothing extra, man. We just love people. Definitely. So you know, listen, y'all know how we do. This is Ask the Producer. We bring guests like this every week, every week. So if y'all want to be on the show, you know, y'all know how to reach us, reach us, reach out to us. Hey, and we can get you on the show right here. But I go by the name of Gabriel Ori. This is my business partner. JR. Hey, and we out. Deuce. <laughs>